So it's really great to kind of put a spin on the content that you're already doing and sharing, but in a way that, yes, you can monetize from it, right? If you think about it, if you have it included in a course or if you have a part of your welcome series or anything like that. So there's just a lot of different options and ways you can utilize it. And I'm just excited to share it with the world, right? Because I feel like everybody should have a perfect podcast. (laughs) Hello and welcome to the Simple and Smart SEO Show, where we provide tips and advice to improve your website search engine ranking. I'm Brittany Herzberg, SEO copywriter for holistic health and wellness pros who want to show up as the answer to a Googled question. And I'm Krista Waddell, an e-commerce seller and content creator. I help business owners communicate the value of their products and services through content so you can make more sales and grow your business. We are business besties who love learning and sharing what we've learned. So what are we waiting for? Let's jump in. All right, before we get too far down the rabbit hole, Leah, we're here to talk with you about all things podcast and SEO and SEO podcast. And like, you know, who are you? What do you do? Who do you help? Why are you here? <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> Hi, I'm Leah Bryant. <laughs> I am the founder of Leah Bryant Co. And we are an all woman um, podcast pro- production boutique agency. And we help coaches course creators, launch, manage their podcast, kind of like end-to-end production and, you know, kind of elevating women, not only in front of the mic, but behind the mic, you know, with the all-woman team and just kind of making the podcast world less stressful and more seamless with your workflow. So I love that. It just sounds so gentle and like, here we go. (laughs) I've actually been on, I've been a guest on at least one podcast that you manage Dolly DeLong's podcast. And I'm not sure whose is going to come out when, but if I can, I'll link to it in the show notes. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. So yay. All right. Leah, Leah, you had me at workflow. (laughs) (laughs) I'm all about being organized. Yes. Yeah. Can we talk about workflow? So for just a second, because I feel like that is one of the most powerful words missing in online business. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, B and I were just talking about that this week. You know, she has been working out her workflows. And I took a Dubsado training online. I need to interrupt my email, sorry. Um, I took a Dubsado training online and that was so helpful. So helpful. So can you talk a little bit about podcast workflows? Yeah, most definitely. So like when we, when I work with a podcaster, it's always important because sometimes I'll get podcasters and this isn't a bad thing if any of them are listening. (laughs) They're just kind of like, okay, I want to record an episode. Let's just go and do this. Okay. Well, why are you recording it? What's it about? What's, what's your audience getting from it? You know, start there. So it's kind of like, it all starts at the beginning. Why, what, who, what are they benefiting? All that fun stuff. Right. And then it's kind of setting out your workflow as far as, um, having a good, um, flow for guest management. What does that look like? Right. Like how seamless is that? Do you have someone doing your, all of that for you? Are you doing it? Do you have templates you're using for your emails? Kind of like streamlining everything and making it easier on you. So that way it's just not doing everything over again, like from scratch, right? Just really being, my philosophy is not that hard work is bad, but work smarter, not harder. So if there's any templates you can create, create them. I love that. Yeah. I was going to say the other um, special word you said right there that I just love is template. So yes. templates are our friends. Yes. Yeah. So, so when it comes, listening... <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> We're all just too excited this morning. When it comes to podcasting, what are some templates? Like you don't have to run through everything, but what are some key templates that you think that people really should use and take time to like create or find or buy? Most definitely. So <clears throat> I think your um, your guest outreach template, like if you're pitching your show for someone to be on, I think that's a really great template to spend a lot of time in. Um, because you could put your bare bones there and then p- then depending on each guest, you could kind of tweak it to them specifically. And then other templates would be, uh, well, your initial email with them, your follow-up emails and stuff like that are always key too, right? Mm-hmm. Other templates are show notes. You can mm-hmm. have a template for your show notes, right? You can just input the different things, have it all laid out for you. So that way, if you're doing it, if you have someone else doing it, they have everything there that they need. 
Because like some of the things are repeatable, like your links and things like that you're sharing each time. Um, maybe there's certain bits of the show notes or just podcast descriptions that you're using that are the same that you can, you know, again, put it in those templates and just change the main points. And then the graphics that you use, like you could essentially have those as templates, right? Based on either oh, seasons yeah. or every couple of months, or if you're having like themed podcast episodes for a certain period of time, you could do different templates for your graphics for that. So there's lots of different things. And then even taking it as far as having a template for your audio, right? So Ooh. like when I edit a podcast, I have templates for each show that has their intro and their outro, and I just pop in their audio for that show. There even have I even have some that were if they have ads, I have those set up in there too. So it's just kind of like pop and go. Just change it out. Makes it easier. My gosh. Um, this is fascinating. I'm like I have so many ideas. Every time I talk to you, my brain breaks because I have so <laughs> many ideas. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you can do templates for audio. Like I'm like, oh gosh, here I go. Shiny object syndrome. <laughs> I know. So yes. it is another way to say that almost to have I mean you've definitely like you mentioned the intro and the outro if you have an ad. Mm -hmm. Is it also kind of like you have a like an, a rough outline for how the podcast is going to go that could yes. kind of be thought of like a template? Yes, most definitely. So not doing yeah. what we do where we're like, hi, person, we're going to talk about this. Here's a few. <laughs> Well, I mean, you hey, that like, is our template. <laughs> this is true. That, you know you what? That's your template. I love you, Crystal. Right? I love you. This is you good. Know, like with <laughs> episode planning, right? You could, mm -hmm. when you, like if you're doing a, like say you're doing a theme of SEO in blank for, I don't know, four weeks, you could essentially create a template for those specific ideas, right? And have your outline for each show. And kind of like help you, not necessarily quote unquote script your audio, but it's good to have like an outline of things that you know you want to cover. And then if mm -hmm. other stuff just happens to pop up in conversation, that's always great too. That's so cool. All right. I have a question for you. How 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 was it going through our workflow so far? I'm scared to ask <laughs> this, but I'm also curious. <laughs> no, I love your reminders. I love it because that was so helpful because not, you know, it's, yes, it's on my calendar, but the reminders... It's just having that top of mind, right? Mm -hmm. I think that your intake form is fabulous. Your, yeah, everything has been fabulous so far. So don't so far. Kind of shout out to B. <laughs> B's over there like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm still I'm like sweating. Cause I'm like, She's awesome. I'm, I'm sweating because I'm like, really, how was it? But I'm like, I'm curious because if I can no, make really things was. better than I want to. Um, and I mean, like just even talking through all of this stuff, it's like having a podcast and figuring out these workflows and putting all the pieces together, it can be overwhelming. I was just telling someone yesterday, like it can be overwhelming, but I love it so much. And it's really cool to be able to do this with Crystal because it's like, we're in this together. And if one of us is down, the other one picks us up and, you know, it just kind of ebbs and flows. So if any, just side note for anyone listening, if you are thinking of doing a podcast, but you're like terrified to do it, or you're just thinking about all the work, there's always someone that can help you. There's always a way to work through it and just go for it. Because we sat on this idea for at least a year, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, at least a year. And really, I don't I don't typically sit on ideas. You know what I mean? But on, I was thinking about this just yesterday um, because I was like, I remember when B said, we should start a podcast. And I think I was really busy at the time. So honestly, I was kind of like, you know what? If B starts doing this, I'll, you know, I'll go along with it and we'll just see, you know, if it happens or whatever. And I mean, that girl took it and ran and I was like, okay, B, I was like, are we doing this? We're doing this, you know? So, you know, I really applaud your initiative, you know, because normally, you know, I'm like the quick start or whatever mm -hmm. of everything, but you were just like full steam ahead and it was a train that was easy to get on. And I was like, okay, here I come. Um, but you're a great partner because you, you know, you wanted to start, but then you're like, okay, now that we've started, these are the things that we need to clean up and you're very analytical. And so having, having B do those types of things with the intakes and stuff, I mean, it's been, you know, it's a blessing, you know, because she <laughs> is really good at those things. And so like, yeah, I just want to give you a shout out, B. I don't know if I've told you that, but thank you. So this yeah, is turning into a love fest. Thank you. No, I mean, so yeah. the thing that I, I feel like you do a whole lot because I don't know any of the tech. I'm like, she she did the thing. Like It's magically online now. <laughs> I don't know how we got yeah. there. And you go and find people and like, anyway, it's been, it's amazing. And I, I wouldn't want to do this without having a buddy in it, having some help, having that backup. And sometimes that backup looks like Leah. So let's get back to her. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
And Leah, you said that you're starting a podcast with a buddy. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about how that started and you know what your plans are? Yes. Thank you for asking. So um, her name is Marcy and she's a podcast manager as well. And we kind of like went through the same program to learn about all the things that we're doing. And we um, have decided to partner up and kind of put our spin on the podcasting world and share knowledge and facts and tidbits and all the things with all the people, you know, to help any way that we can. And we're specifically going to be talking about private podcasts um, because they are underutilized and they can be such an asset to any business. And it's just going to be really exciting to talk about that. So super excited. There's not any, it should be with in the next 30 ish days. <laughs> I love that. That's that's how our start date was. It's like it's gonna be this. Wait, no, it's not. It's gonna be this. Wait, right. hold on. No, it's <laughs> okay. Hold on just real quick. What's a private podcast? Okay, can I can I tell them? Can I tell yes. them? Yes. Okay. If you are listening and Crystal, you too. Leah has a quiz. The whole reason I know Leah is because of Linda Sadu. She Linda Sadu is like the personality quiz queen. And Leah went through her program. I'm sure you can tell them all the kind of stuff about that. But she has in her welcome sequence after you take the quiz, she has a private podcast. I was just listening to it last week because all the episodes have been saved up. I haven't had time to go listen to them, even though they're like three to five minutes. But I was listening to them and I just binged the entire private podcast. I learned so much about Leah. It was so interesting. Okay, so tell us more about it now that I've you know <laughs> built it up. I love it. I love it. No, but like private podcast. So essentially they're they're like your podcast here, right? But it's private. So the only people who have access to it are who either A, you give access to, B, they subscribe, like pay a fee for, or like C, it's included in a course. Or if you're like a corporation and you have company training or newsletters or things like that, they can utilize a private podcast to inform their employees of all the things. So it's really great to kind of put a spin on the content that you're already doing and sharing, but in a way that, yes, you can monetize from it, right? If you think about it, if you have it included in a course or if you have a part of your welcome series or anything like that. So there's just a lot of different options and ways that you can utilize it. And I'm just excited to share it with the world, right? Because I feel like everybody should have a private podcast. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So following up on that, like when you do a private podcast, is it the same type of thing where you have to pay like a monthly fee to have it hosted on something like Buzzsprout or do you deliver it differently? I mean, can you give us some details on that? Sure thing. So I actually host my private podcast in Hello Audio. So they were the first ones to kind of spearhead the private podcasting space. In my opinion, I think that they've done a pretty fabulous job and I really love uh, love them. There's some different ones like Libsyn has, Libsyn Glow. I think that Captivate may have a private option, but it's essentially the same thing, right? So you set up your RSS feed like you would normally. Um, you do all the things normally. You have to have your cover art and your description and you pay the fee for hosting it, right? To be able to utilize that space in the internet world. And then you just launch it like you regularly would. However, it's only available to whomever you want to listen to it. And you do that by like email. So like I have it like with my quiz, let's just use this for an example. So with my quiz, my welcome series, I have it like I use Zapier, Zapier, tomato, tomato, however you say <laughs> <laughs> So I have a zap that goes when the results come in, it sends Hello Audio a notification. Hey, this email got this quiz result and it sends them a said, hey, let's, you know, level up your welcome series or your internet or your quiz results and listen to my private podcast and they can subscribe and it opens up like in Apple or Spotify or whatever podcast platform like you listen to on your device. Fascinating. So is your private podcast free and it's just something they have to opt into or is it a paid thing? Are you tired of working a job you hate? I'm Mark Savant, host of the After Hours Entrepreneur Podcast and I Know That Feeling. I used to wake up every morning dreading the day, and after years of effort, I was able to leave my job and do something that I love. You can too. The After Hours Entrepreneur Podcast is your guide to building profitable six-figure years. I'm sharing the lessons that I wish I knew and bringing on experts like Pat Flynn, Jasmine Starr, and more. Click the link. You don't need to dread Mondays anymore. Take action and build a life you love. 
so it's free. So it's free. Like, so I essentially what I did was emails are, in my opinion, emails are great, but sometimes I'm a little like, oh gosh, I have a lot of emails. So I was trying to think of a way to make it easier on listeners. So it's completely free. So they have the option to listen to me talk about the things I talk about in the written email because I also send the written email too. But it's also just another another way because people learn differently too, right? Some people learn mm -hmm. better with video. Some people learn better with audio. That's brilliant. Okay, so I just have to comment on that because I just got an email from Neil Patel. And if you guys subscribe to him, you probably got it too. And he was talking about a content hub which I love. And I have utilized this concept of a content hub on my website because I sell senior night gifts. So my content hub is all about senior night, senior night ideas, blah, 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 blah. Well, anyway, back to his email. I was disappointed because a lot of times when he sends emails, he'll say, you know, click this link to, you know, learn more. And it's usually to a YouTube video. Yeah. Now, YouTube is not necessarily my favorite, but YouTube will play continuously in the background whether or not I'm watching the video or not, right? But this time I clicked, I was on my way to school or getting ready to go to school with my son to drop him off and it was a blog. So I was like, dang it, no. I can't read this right now. You know what I mean? But I really, really want to learn about it. I really want to see what he has to say, but I can't read it. And so I love what you're saying because that would have been a perfect opportunity for that to be in an audio format or something so that I could listen to it on the way to drop my son off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's actually why I haven't opened many of his emails because it usually goes to a YouTube video. And I know myself, I'll end up in a three hour <laughs> binge yeah. of videos that I did not need to go watch. Yeah. So I have a question. Are the private podcasts searchable? Like this podcast of ours is searchable? No. There's nothing for it. Okay. No, it doesn't show on, it doesn't show up on any platform. You couldn't find it unless you were subscribed. Got it. Which unless, I like. It's yeah. interesting. Because getting for, okay. from a getting found perspective, not so great. But from the, you know, the listener, the email subscriber, or the just, you know, the podcast member, very interesting. Right. Because it's almost like kind of like so, a way that you could tease, you're fine, but you could tease <laughs> like, you know, hey, you're privy to this information that nobody else is. Right. So consider, you know, you're special. So welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like being special sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> right. We all do. <laughs> And you know, there's so many things now that don't feel special anymore, you yeah. know, because as you grow in online business, you start to realize, oh crap, I'm getting a welcome series. I mean, have you ever thought back to a time that you received an email from someone who was like, you know, a guru or a course creator or something, and they sent you an email and you're like replying back to it. Like, this is so cool. Yes. Thanks so much. And then, and then. Uh, the first time I realized that I was actually sending, you know, a reply to a group email was when I got an autoresponder that said, hey, we've received your email. And then I felt like such a dork. I was like, oh, I wish I could unsend, you know, but you don't realize that you're a part of this machine, you know, yeah. so there's, there's so few ways now that we can feel special. And so I'm like, super excited to hear about this because I'm like, yes, that does make someone feel special. I love that. Yeah. I can't remember, Leah, do you, I know you and I were messaging, messaging on Instagram this week. Do you remember what the idea was that we had for a private podcast? Like you threw out this idea and I was like, maybe, I don't know. Like you were saying it was something I should do. Do you recall? I know that, um, I'm going to have to go digging. Don't mind me. No, I think it was something to do with like what you're doing. It's fine. You can, we can continue that and then That's I'll just fine. be searching over here. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, in the also, meantime, sorry, go ahead. Okay. No, so, well, you go ahead, finish that thought because I was going to go down a different uh, question line. No, you're fine. I was just going to say, you can also use um, Patreon, right? And have like that private audio for people who just pay for that Patreon. And then you can share like additional tidbits or a deep dive into a topic or something like that. And that's the way that podcasters, even pocket, just podcasters in general could monetize on their, on their podcasts. Awesome. Yeah, that was going to be a, a question I had about Mike monetizing because I was listening to an interview with Buzzsprout. They were interviewing someone over in the UK who was just killing it. Top three podcasts, millions of downloads or whatever. And she said she didn't make a dime from her podcast during that time. And so like it was before Buzzsprout had the ads and different things. So I was, I was just shocked, you know, because I was thinking, 
Ooh, you know, like, I think there's this, this idea that when you have a podcast, you're like automatically monetizing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was curious of your thoughts about how to monetize a podcast. I I will say that don't get into podcasting because you're going to get rich and be the next (laughs) Joe Rogan. (laughs) It doesn't happen for all of us. It doesn't. And it's a long game, right? Like podcasting really is a long game. It's, you know, building up your content, building up your audience, finding what resonates, really speaking to them and what problems they're having and just kind of figuring out what is best for you, right? Like not just your audience, but also for you. So, you know, there's all kinds of ways that you can monetize, you know, with sponsors, with ads, with the Patreon, right? You could sell merchandise. Everybody loves a sticker. I love a sticker. I would totally buy a, a SEO, an SEO sticker. So hint, we hint. need stickers. We have a <laughs> shop. Crystal set up a shop. So this is awesome. like another side yes. road, another no, like back end techie thing that she did, right? And I'm like, we need stickers. We need stickers. We need stickers. Yes. Yes. <laughs> stickers are coming. Stickers are coming. I Check the show it. notes. I'll put the link there as soon as they're available. Yes, I love it. I'm so excited. But yeah. And it's like, you know, just think about different things that you could do. Like if there's any kind of templates you could sell, I don't know, just all kinds of stuff that you could like small things here and there, right? Little by little makes the bigger picture even better. So just kind of throw that out there and think about. And we've got a couple of different things. So we have the merch that Crystal so brilliantly dreamed up and like put into action last week, a couple weeks ago. And then she also was like, we should do SEO audits. And I was like, duh, yes. we should. So that's inspired like one of the podcasts that we did, the the SEO audit on the fly, where she looked at my website and I wasn't doing so bad. And then, oh, there was something else. Oh, Crystal also set up a really, really, really cool, like buy us a coffee fund thing. Yes. Um, so those are the three things that we've done. What have we done? Have we, meaning you, have we done anything else, Crystal? <laughs> no, I don't think that's it. We do have like the merch of the sweatshirts and the mugs yeah. and that different stuff. So that's really fun. Um, really cute things. But yeah, I mean, I think you're right, Billy. At the end of the day, you know, I mean, B and I didn't get into this to make money. No. <laughs> we got into it to share ideas, you know, and like to know that we're sharing ideas that people are actually interested in learning about and joining in the conversation with. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, I've I've talked about it before, you know, when you are an online business owner, it can feel so lonely, you know? And again, when you get punched in the face with the fact that you've been kind of duped by other online business owners Mm -hmm. thinking, you know, certain things about how it works. And then you realize the internal structures, it's just like, oh, what am I even doing here? And it makes you feel small. It makes you feel, you know, all sorts of things. So community is so important, you know, whether or not you have like a business bestie or you just have a safe place where you can go to learn things where people aren't always trying to sell you something, you know? So it's like, hey, if people buy us a coffee, cool. If they buy a sweatshirt, cool. But this podcast was created specifically to help people feel connected and learn about how things work. Go ahead, beep. And I'm so excited. I like blew up Leah's Instagram yesterday because I was talking about how she pointed out to us when we recorded or when we had the podcast audit with her, how she was telling us about Gallus, which is like people can go to the show notes of this episode or of any episode. I actually think there's one that doesn't have a link, but don't tell anybody. So <laughs> you can go to the link and it allows you to stay in like you can continue listening to the podcast. I think it's good for Apple and Android. We click this link and you can either text us or each other, or you can leave a voice memo to us or to like everyone. And so that's another way that we can have this like community aspect. I think of it at least like a community aspect, even if it's just for that episode, it's like another way to continue the conversation. And it's not only good for us with like figuring out what we can share more of and who we might want to interview or like ideas and things that we we need to talk about. But it's also cool to learn from you guys and for you to like support each other. And like, you know, it's just cool. I love it. It's just amazing. (laughs) Yeah. So Leah, I have another question for you because, um, you know, in addition to this podcast that you're starting, I mean, your business is all about like helping other podcasts. So like, what's, what's your favorite thing about what you do? Ooh, my favorite thing would have to be, um, the strategy portion because, I used to be a fraud investigator. <laughs> I love your story. Producer. <laughs> I went from fighting crime to fighting ums and us. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> 
you know, just my little quirkiness there. But so the strategy portion, right? Because I can strategically help a podcaster uh, look at their podcast holistically, find where there may be gaps and kind of narrow in on those gaps, figure out a way to fix it or elevate it even more or whatever, right? Just kind of help it be better. And that's pretty like that's in connecting, right? Just connecting with people from all walks of life and um, just being able to help them because I'm a helper by nature. So not only helping, but then being strategic. It's like I'm living the dream. You really as corny are. as that sounds, but it's so true. I love it. You sound like my like twin. I feel like I find a lot of these twins out in the world, but like right. introverted, want to help, right. like connecting, like the strategy. I'm like, yes, tell us more. <laughs> <laughs> right. Love it. So do you have an SEO strategy for your business, like this business of helping podcasters? I do. So, and it's very interesting because in my, it it seems like, and this is my opinion, but it seems like, and it makes sense though, right? So Google actually didn't start indexing audio, I think until, what was it, 2018 or 19? Um, so Google indexes audio. I know I'm over here. Like say what now? Yeah. So they didn't do this before. Right. So it wasn't SEO wasn't a thing with podcasting and now it is because Google is indexing audio content. So, and they're including it in the, the, you know, the search engine, what is it? Search engine results page. Yeah. So think about when you are with your podcast, you also have to think about SEO. So think about how, you can utilize the content to market and be strategic about how you do that. So like some of the things we talked about, like within your audit, have a blog post for each and every episode because that's written content on your page, right? And really optimize that page to have your podcast player on there, have some like a photo or two on there so that you're also doing the backend stuff with your website. And then Google is loving all the things because they're spending lots of time on your page and all that fun stuff, right? So then... You can also think about you have you have that right for your website, but then you want to really optimize your show itself. So the name of your podcast, like your name of your podcast is brilliant because it does everything it should. Right. I am (laughs) so excited. It checks all the lists. (laughs) (laughs) And then we so like the, the title of your podcast and then you can SEO the title of your episodes. What keywords? Now, it's not keywords that you think are important. It's keywords that your audience is searching for, right? And there's lots of different ways and programs that you could actually utilize to figure that out. And then not only your title, but then you can take it a step further. Your show description that's within the podcast player, right? So that is different from your show notes. And a lot of people don't know that either. But your show description is that brief little blurb in Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, wherever. And then just making sure that you're using keywords through that, that also pulls Another thing is within your episode, as you're talking, naturally, those keywords are going to come out too. bam, your audio has, you know, that portion of it, too. And then your metadata, metadata. Sorry, I'll get it out here. <laughs> <laughs> I just get so jazzed tongue... about talking about I know. All the things. <laughs> <laughs> but you're in which is like kind of like your ID3 tag. So within your audio, your when you go to edit, Um, whether you're doing it or having someone else do it, they can put all the things in your audio, your title, your show name. Um, They can actually put keywords in there that you want to pop up with the audio. They can put the link to your website, your RSS feed, the dates. I mean, all the things are in there. And that's really beneficial too, because Google now is indexing your audio. So that's good. And then just kind of utilizing any links that you have put those in the show description, right? And on your website blog where you're talking about the episode and ask for reviews because those are helpful too. It all boils back down to, you know, discoverability and really utilizing SEO as you guys know and how important it is and need to tell the world. (laughs) I have so many questions and so many things and I'm sure Crystal does too. Who's going to throw the first first pitch? Yes. Okay, I'm going to toss it out there. Hey, this would be a great time for you to pause and leave us a review. Five Please. star. Thank you. <laughs> yes. That wasn't awkward at all. <laughs> I love it. I forgot one thing. I'm so sorry. So, and a lot of people, I don't like to say this for this specific reason, but it's a great, it's a great benefit 
So if you don't transcribe your show for the deaf and hard of hearing community, you should. Because A, hello, let's be inclusive. And B, it's great for SEO for your Mm -hmm. website, right? Like so you're hitting two birds with one stone. It's just amazing. It is really great. And actually, so Leah did our podcast audit not too long ago, a couple weeks ago. And I have a friend who's a blind web designer. And we were kind of hemming and hawing about the transcript because we don't want to put something up that's incorrect and it has errors. Mm -hmm. But we would like to have something mostly to help people. But yes, there is the added benefit of SEO. So we weren't really sure what to do. And I was like, you know what? Let me just go ask the source. Let me just go ask the person who would actually be impacted by this. And Robbie my friend in Greensboro, North Carolina. Shout out, Robbie. She said she listens to the show too. (laughs) She was saying that it's better to have it up than to not have it up. And she said in her experience, she hadn't run across many transcripts with errors. She, We have a mutual friend who has run across the transcripts with errors and she kind of found it annoying. But it seems like the preference, at least with my small community, is to have the transcript up even if it has errors in there. So just sharing that in case you need to hear that too. Thank you for asking that. I'm glad to know that too. Just even from my perspective, it's great to know. Yeah, totally. Because I mean, we can sit here and we can go, I don't know what would be helpful. What about this? What about that? But we're not the ones that are really impacted by it. So yeah. Yeah. I have more questions, but Crystal, where are you at? Do you have questions? Oh, no, I'll let you go. I just wanted to say thanks to Robbie. And, you know, maybe we could even, if, if you're listening right now and this impacts you, we'd love to hear your thoughts, you know, so please shoot us an email, hello at simpleandsmartseo.com and let us know, like, how should we do the transcript? You know, how would you prefer that the transcript is handled, um, you know, in terms of does, is it a machine automation? Okay. Is that enough for you? Or do you, would you prefer that it's, you know, word for word, that type of thing? We really want to know. So, you know, shoot us an email, let us know, and um, we'll definitely share your thoughts as well. So, but thanks, Robbie. Yeah, yeah. And I did ask Robbie to come on and be a guest. She's got a lot of life happening right now, but hopefully in the future we'll have her on. So stay tuned for that. Okay, back to you. I have a couple questions and then we'll wrap up unless they jog some other questions for Crystal. (laughs) Okay, you mentioned programs and keywords for podcasts. Is there a program that you like or something that maybe we don't know that is specifically for podcasts and keywords? So it's probably like any other keyword. I think uh, Google... Uh, as keyword planner would be one. Mm-hmm. Moz's keyword explorer is another one that we use sometimes. And then it, you could really, literally, when you're when you go into Google and you you have your topic in mind, think of questions that your audience may ask. How does that rank when you, when you ask that question? That's a great way to figure it out, right? Take your topic idea, put it into Google. What does it look like? Are people searching for it? Are they searching for a different variation? Because you know how it'll give you different things that you can search for if you start typing um, and then just kind of base it on that. And that's what we do a lot too, like as far as like content planning and that sort of thing. Yeah, I love that. So it's it's cool to hear that you're using a lot of the same tools we are. Um, and if you need some extra help, if you want to do like a step above just a general Google search, if you want some like numbers and volume there, I and Crystal, like we like uh, using Ubersuggest. So if you're in Google Chrome, yes. you can have the Ubersuggest free extension And I find that really helpful. So like that was my first, I think that was my gateway SEO tool. So yeah. I literally just found that this week and actually bought it. Welcome. Because I'm going to start really using, I yeah. So I'm excited for to use that. So yes, thank you. So good. Yeah. (laughs) Uber suggests needs to have some merch, like just a t-shirt, you know, for all the Uber buddies out there. Uber Um, buddies. Oh my gosh, we have a name. (laughs) Yeah. You should ask if they have an affiliate link. (laughs) We, they don't. Exactly. Oh, I, I know don't. they don't. Yeah. They, they don't. I don't think. And HRFs definitely doesn't, which is crazy, you know. Um, but I was thinking, speaking of buddies, like uh, YouTube has TubeBuddy yeah. as like a keyword finder or yeah. something like that. I bought it a long time ago. I never really went into it a whole lot because, you know, went off in a thousand other directions. <laughs> but I'm surprised that there's not like one for podcasting. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That has something similar to what TubeBuddy offers. Yeah. yeah. I I mean, one day, I'm sure they're probably working on it somewhere. There may be something that I'm just not knowledgeable of at the moment, but I'll do some research and let you know. Sweet. And if we find something, we'll <laughs> add it in the show notes and, and add it. a link, which, which makes me think of my final question to you, which is, can you have too many links in your show description, show notes, whatever we're calling them appropriately? So in my opinion, I think that having the important like the ones you really want to draw attention to in the player, right? And then when you have that 
go back to the website for all the show notes. I would put the rest of the links there that may not be pertinent to the episode or like it's not episode dependent, I should say, right? If it's not episode dependent, then definitely. I don't think the links are never, there's never too many links, right? <laughs> I think <laughs> some people may disagree. <laughs> I like that answer. I'm rolling right? with that one. No, yeah, I do it. <laughs> okay. I have one final question. Okay. So I was listening to ourselves on our podcast yesterday. I'm so um, glad I'm not the only know, one do that it. does that. Yeah. It's like, that must be where all of our, our listens are coming from. Me and B <laughs> listen to ourselves like 50 times a day. Um, <laughs> That's your I secret. And, no. Yeah. <laughs> but um, just really quick, we had talked about, you know, whether you should use like the Buzzsprout URL and just, um, you know, the Buzzsprout, mm. whatever they give you or your own domain. Do you have any thoughts on that before we go? I definitely suggest and try to bend the arm of it everyone who has a podcast to bring it back to your domain, whether that be like, if you have an existing domain that goes along with your business, your podcast is an extension of that, of your marketing or whatnot, add podcasting to your website. And then that way you could break down each episode with a blog post and help with SEO that way. Because when you're utilizing like Buzzsprout and stuff, if it's not redirecting back to your website, then Buzzsprout is getting all of that. Like if, if they don't know that you have a website, they don't know to go back to that. If you don't have in your, you know, you don't have a call to action in your audio and in your show note links and things like that, then they're not going to go. But definitely, I always love to add it, plaster it, let the world know you have a podcast. <laughs> I love that. And that, I mean, in terms of SEO, if you have it just staying in Buzzsprout, it's not helping you at all. But right, if you're linking not. from Buzzsprout mm -hmm. to your domain, that's helping, it's yes. giving you a backlink. It's yes. giving you you know, add a domain authority from using Buzzsprout and ha from having them attached to you in yes. some way. So definitely link back to your domain. All right. Before we kick you out of here, so, so kindly and gently, where can people <laughs> find you? And do you have anything that our listeners can maybe benefit from anything you want to share? Sure. So uh, I am most active on Instagram, but I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Leah Bryant underscore co. Um, I, Facebook, I think it's Leah Bryant co. And I have, I'm really love to share all the knowledge. I, I'm definitely love educating people. So I don't keep anything secret. So I try to share as much as I can on social. And then if launching a podcast is on your 20, what year is it going to be? 2023? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, uh. what year is it? So if that's like something that you're looking at in Q4, Q1, and like, hey, I really want to add this to my business ecosystem, or hey, I just want to do this for the hey of it, then I have a free PDF that you can download and it walks you through step by step of what you could do for your podcast. Um, and that's at leahbryantco.com backslash roadmap. And that'll also put you on my newsletter where I should newsletter where I share lots of fun and exciting things about podcasting. I give away so much. <laughs> yeah, you do. It's I love just... it. It's amazing. I was going to say, don't forget about the quiz too. I, what oh, yeah. link is that at? Because it's an amazing quiz. It's You can go to leahbryant.com backslash quiz and you can find out what type of podcaster you are or would be. It's really great. And then you'd have, you'd have the access to my private podcast. You can hear it's all so about fun. that too. I love it. Thank you so much for being here. We'll have to have you back again, but thank you so much for being here and yes. sharing all your knowledge. Well, thank you so much thank for having you. me. You guys are awesome. Keep up the good work. I want to say you guys are doing awesome because if you weren't, you wouldn't be celebrating in 2000 downloads. So you're doing great things. So remember thank that. You. Proud of you. Thank you. Love thank you. Thank you. All right. Love I know you, you have too. to go. You're fine. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us today. If you like this info, subscribe before you go so you never miss out on something related to SEO. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>